think he sees us.
Grace, mercy, and the peace to you from God the Father, God the Son, and from God the Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church. Whether you're joining us here in person, from home, or wherever you're watching, thanks for joining us today as we gather together to worship our God together. I do have a couple of announcements uh, for us this morning as we begin. The, the first is this, as it's been getting uh, darker earlier and earlier. We are moving our uh, midweek evening Vesper service indoor, indoors. So uh, our Vesper service, it takes place Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. It's uh, just a time for us to reconnect with God and with each other in the middle of the week, a short time of scripture reading and song and prayer. And we hope you'll join us. That takes place Wednesdays at 7, and that'll now take place here in the sanctuary. We do ask, since we're moving indoors uh, and we only offer uh, one service on Wednesdays, please do wear a mask uh, for that short service if you join us. Second announcement uh, this morning, after 32 years of uh, serving us as custodian, Albert is retiring this week on Wednesday, and so <laughs> you see Albert, Albert gave a big cheer. Can we thank Albert for his years of service for us? If you brought a card uh, gift for Albert, there's a little basket there in the lobby. If you'll leave that uh, for him, we'll, we'll gather those together, give them to him later in this week. We love you, Albert. We're going to miss you on staff, uh, and we're so thankful to God for you. And as we um, prepare for worship, let's take a moment uh, of silence, uh, prepare our hearts for worship, just surrender anything that's distracting us, giving that to Jesus, and then uh, I'll open us with prayer. A moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship. Indeed, Father, we give thanks to you for this opportunity we have to gather together and to reorient our hearts back to you after this past week. We pray, Lord, that you would take all of these distractions, all of these burdens, we cast them onto Jesus because he cares for us. And Holy Spirit, would you now lead us in worship? Would Christ be exalted? Would your name be lifted high? And would we, your people, be edified? For we gather and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning in Psalm 126, our text we'll study later today. In this text, we see God's goodness to his people all throughout history. And you see God's, God's goodness to us in our past. It gives us confidence and courage for today and for tomorrow. And so would you stand with me for a call to worship at home too? Would you please stand with us as we hear God call us together for worship and as we call one another to worship? I'll read parts, we'll read parts together from Psalm 102. A reminder of God's past goodness. You, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. Let's read together. Of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. One more time together. But you are, you are the, the same, same, and your years, years have, have no end. end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. secure. Their, Their offspring, offspring shall be established before you. Please be seated as we sing together. Jesus, we 
Try us, stay the saints triumphant, rise in bright array, the King of glory passes on his way. service today we're spending it in the psalms as you'll probably see and uh later in the psalms one of the things that david says to god he says to god your your hand of discipline is heavy and we have this aspect of the trials and the tribulations and the difficulties of life being part of god's discipline the way he he grows us and even galvanizes us and uh so in this passage i'm going to read we we talk about God's discipline and the way he uses it and just the weight of it and we hear David crying out and one of the things that's beautiful about the Psalms is David teaches us that it's okay to cry out to God and to even complain to God or to say this this is really heavy Um, and so as we read this and as we sing the following song I encourage you to with David feel free to pour your heart out to God and cry out and say your hand of discipline is heavy So from uh, Psalm 39. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of the fool. I am mute. I do not open my mouth, for it is you who have done it. Remove your stroke from me. I am spent by the hostility of your hand. When you discipline a man with rebukes for sin, you consume like a moth what is dear to him. Surely all mankind is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. I come God, I come, return to the Lord, the one who's broke, the one who's torn me apart. He struck down to bind me up, you say you do it all in love, that I might know you in your suffering. you slay me, yet I will praise you, though you take from me, I will bless your name, though you ruin me, still I will worship, sing a song to the one who I see the Lord did high upon that day behold the Lamb that was slain and I'll know that every tear was worth it all song to the one 
trust in him, he will answer us, he will hear us, and he will again show his favor to us. Let's read together Psalm 40 as we remind ourselves of God's faithfulness to his people. I'll read parts, and then we'll read parts together. Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Let's read together. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Again together. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, To those who go astray after a lie, you have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None, none can compare with you. One more time together. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. He set our feet upon a rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. We have been united to him through our baptism, and he will raise us up again. Remember the rock. Remember Jesus. Remember you've been united to him. Let's sing together. Please remember your masks. Built on nothing less in Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every hot and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. My anger holds within the veil. Christ alone.
found. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Our faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Father in heaven, we give you thanks that you are our cornerstone, Lord, that you are the, the stone that the builders rejected, Lord, that you are the stone who makes men stumble. Lord, we thank you that you love us, Lord, that you saved us, that you called us together to worship before you today, and we thank you, O oh Lord, that you've given us this opportunity right now to give back to you just a small piece of a small portion of what you've entrusted to us. Help us, Father, that we'd be good stewards and to trust you to give from a joyful, willing heart. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, people of God, will you turn with me in your copy of God's Word to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When you get to Psalm 126, if you would, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word at home too or wherever you're watching, please stand with us as we all stand together as one body of Christ for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 126, the text is also here on the screen. This is the word of the Lord, a song of a sense. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. And then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. 
Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray and give thanks to him for it and also pray with and for one another. Indeed, Father, we give thanks to you for your word. And we come, Father, in need of your word. We do come, Father, this morning giving thanks and praise to you for your many blessings, all your goodness and provision in ways that you've helped and answer prayer. We give thanks to you with Colleen and and her uncle Ken and the successful elbow surgery. We give thanks to you with uh, Gwen and Jake Brooks and with their family for the birth of Warren Eugene. You give life and we give you thanks. We give thanks to you for Albert for the many ways that he's touched all of our lives, for his beautiful faith as a model to us, for his years of faithful service. We give thanks to you. We also come, Father, to your word in need of your help, of your mercy, of your grace, of your assistance. We, we pray for Heather Scarberry as she awaits the results from her biopsy. Lord, would you give her good news? Would you give her faith to receive whatever news you have for her? Would you strengthen her through this? We pray for Jimmy Melanie Parkinson's brother in the hospital with a, a number of health struggles. Lord, would you heal? And even more than this, would you use this to draw your people to yourself? We pray, Lord, for Les Nickham as they still await test results in the hospital. For Monica Brown in the hospital with COVID on a ventilator. For our president and and first lady. Father, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace. We ask for your healing. That you would touch these bodies, that you would heal them and restore them. And we pray, Father, as... As only you know our hearts and all of these, we pray that you would use us to draw your people to yourself, to give true saving faith to those who don't have it. And Father, we, we pray for our nation and for our world as they see the, the leader of the United States contract COVID. May that cause those who don't know you to feel their own, to feel their own vulnerabilities to confront their own mortality. And would you grant them saving faith? Bring those who don't know you true saving faith, Lord Jesus. We need your life. We need your word. And so we ask now through your word, Holy Spirit, would you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to understand. Cause us, Father, here in your word to know you more, to love you better, to love like you love. For this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please be seated? Some of you know that my wife, Yone, was born and raised in Lithuania. We met there in 2005 when I was there on a, on a short teaching trip, and later that summer, after numerous phone calls and, and a couple of visits, we got engaged. We went to the, right after getting engaged, we went to the U.S. consulate there in Lithuania. We said, Look, we want to get married. What's the best way for us to get married and then come to the U.S.? And they said, well, Chris, you need to go back to the U.S., apply for a fiancé visa, bring Yone to the U.S., and then get married there. And so we did. It took about six months to go through the process, but then the day was finally here. It was January 28, 2006. Yone was arriving at the Chicago O'Hare Airport. I was in St. Louis at seminary, so I drove up to, to meet her, to pick her up, and it was like a dream. When, when, when she finally came through customs, I don't even remember getting her bags. In fact, when when we finally got in the car, we were going to go and spend the weekend with my mom and dad who were in Michigan. 
And I'm pretty good with directions, actually. But it turned out we ended up halfway to Wisconsin. <laughs> I, mean, I just couldn't think straight, right? It really was like a dream. Was she really here? Are we really getting married? That next morning, we, we were staying with my parents. She was in the spare bedroom. I was in the living room on the couch, and I'd wake up. It, could this really be true? Is Yone really here? Are we really getting married? It was like a dream. Well, we did get married. I went back to class. I was in seminary at the time. We drove back to St. Louis. And then we have this expression. Some of you know it. The honeymoon was over. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Living together, different opinions about whatever, fighting, navigating life together. Eventually, the honeymoon ends and the hard part begins. That's this psalm, Psalm 126. Psalm 126, it's, it's a song for the, for the dry places, for the hard places, for when the honeymoon's over. You see, the Israelites, they, they had been in exile in Babylon for 70 years. It, it was because of their disobedience to God, but because of that, God allowed the Babylonians to invade Israel, to destroy the land, destroy the city, destroy the temple, and take the majority of the people as prisoners into exile. And the people had been in Babylon for 70 years. But then that day came. 538 B.C., after the Persians defeated Babylon, the ruler of the Persians, Cyrus, he says, the exiles, they can all go back to their land. Imagine that news. As an Israelite, slaves for 70 years in a foreign country, imagine reading in the paper, hearing in the nightly news, you get to go back home. You've been set free. You've been released. It, it was like a dream, the people said. I mean, they, they couldn't believe it. They, they laughed, they cried, they sang. It was like a dream. And sure, it, it took a while, months to years to pack up and, and finally make that long journey home back to Israel. But oh, what rejoicing. Oh, what gladness. And they started rebuilding their homes and they started rebuilding their lives and they started rebuilding the temple. And it was like a dream. But years go by. The honeymoon ends. The hard part begins. And so after years back in Israel, the, the temple still isn't finished. The rest of the people, they've not come back home from Babylon. The population is still decimated. The land is still in ruins, and it was hard. When will we see you finish your work, O oh God? When are you going to put an end to the fighting, to the struggling, to, the, to that empty feeling, that, that feeling of incomplete, of not yet whole, of, of something's missing and not right? When, God? That's this psalm. Psalm 126 is a song for the dry places, for the hard places, for when the honeymoon is over. How do we make it? How do we make it through those dry and hard places? How do we make it when, when the honeymoon ends and the hard part begins? That's the psalm. Psalm 126. The song teaches us how to make it through the hard places, how to make it through the dry places, how to make it when the honeymoon is over. And the song teaches us in the hard places and the dry places, when the honeymoon is over, thank, pray, persevere. This is how you make it. Thank, pray, persevere. Thank, pray, persevere. Let's look closer at each of these so that we too can endure when the honeymoon is over. First this morning is thank. I think the key verse of the psalm is verse 3. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. The Lord did great things. In verses 1 and 2, the singers, they're remembering what God had done for them in their past. He, he brought them home from Babylon. He was rebuilding their city, rebuilding their lives. You see, remembering God's past goodness, it gives us courage for today and for tomorrow. 
Remembering God's faithfulness, his his salvation, his provision, his his answered prayer, it gives us strength, it gives us courage to face whatever's in front of us today and whatever might come to us in the future. And thanking God for his past work, it gives us courage and strength for today and for tomorrow. Well, so what are those what are those past works of God? First, it's his salvation. Verse 1, this reference to the exodus out of Babylon. Verse 1, it's thanksgiving to God for his salvation. He kept his promises. He defeated their enemies. He gave them life back home, back in the land. And, And so this exodus out of Babylon, just like the exodus out of Egypt, it's a picture of God's salvation for his people. And we see that, that salvation fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, God has brought us out of sin and darkness and death. Through Jesus Christ, God has kept his promises. He defeated our spiritual enemies, and he gives us life in him. First thing here is we give thanks to God for his salvation. Second is we thank God for his salvation and his faithfulness to his people. We thank God for his faithfulness to his people. This psalm It's a celebration of God's faithfulness to Israel when they were still in Babylon. You see, friends, when we learn and when we sing this song, it's a celebration of God's work for his people in the past. He has done great things for his people throughout time and throughout history. And so when we, when we read the stories of Israel in the Bible, when, when, we, when we read the stories of the church in the New Testament, when, when we read the testimonies and stories of the church throughout the ages, all these stories, they're, they're witnesses of God's faithfulness to his people. And, and those stories, they, they celebrate the Lord has done great things for us. And we give thanks It's why we read the stories of Israel in the Old Testament. It's why we read the story of the church in the New Testament. It's why we read biographies and autobiographies of the people of God who have gone before us. We give thanks to God for his faithfulness to his people. You see, when you're in the dry places, those hard places, when the honeymoon is over, give thanks to God for his salvation. Give thanks to God for his faithfulness to his people throughout the ages. Third, then, we give thanks to God for his goodness to us. In your life, how specifically, right? How has God shown his goodness to you? What gifts has he given to you? When when has he rescued, delivered, and, and saved? When did he answer prayer? When did he provide? Give thanks to God for his goodness to you in your life. You see, friends, God's past actions, they drive our confidence in his future action. God's past action drives our confidence in his future action. So whatever dry place you're in, whatever hard thing you're going through, when the honeymoon is over and the hard part begins, give thanks to God. Thank God for his salvation, for his faithfulness to his people through the ages for a specific goodness to you. That's how we make it when the honeymoon is over. Give thanks to God. Thank God. In the dry places, in the hard places, when the honeymoon's over, the song teaches us how to make it, how to keep going. The first thing is to thank God. The second is to pray. Pray. And now maybe most of us, when, when we read the Bible, we tend to read for ourselves. What, what, is this, what does this text say to me? How does this text help me? What is God saying to me? A, a, and friends, that's good and it's right and God speaks to us through this text. It is indeed for each of us. But sometimes I think we need to remember a little better. We need to be careful not to forget those to and for whom the text was first written. Right? What, is the, what did this text first say to the people to whom it was written? Because this question here, it, it helps us get after what the text intends to say to us. What does this text say to those to whom it was first written? So look at verse 4. Verse 4 is the prayer of the psalm. And the prayer goes like this, Restore our fortunes, O Lord. 
Now, this word fortune is in our English Bibles. Actually, in Hebrew, it's a little bit closer to the word for, for captives. It's that which was taken away, that which was imprisoned. And I think then this is a prayer first about the rest of the exiles. You know, when, when the people came back home from Babylon, when they came back to Israel from exile, o- only a small fraction of the people came. Only a small part of the Israelites that were in Babylon came home when God set them free. Well, now these, these years have gone by, and the singers say that the years have gone by. Where is everybody? Where's the rest of your people, oh God? Bring them home. Bring back the captives. You see, friends, I, I think this is, first of all, a prayer for the people of God. Bring your people home. Lord Jesus, save the lost and bring them home. This is a prayer for salvation for for those who don't yet know Jesus, for for all those who yet remain in captivity, captive to sin, captive to darkness, captive to death. Restore the captives, Lord Jesus, and bring them home. This is a prayer for salvation. This is a prayer for the people of God. It's a prayer for the wandering then, those who grew up in the church but, but seem to have abandoned her. Those who have heard the promise of the good news of Jesus, but they seem to have walked away. Restore the captives, Lord Jesus. Bring them home. This prayer in verse 4, it, it's first of all a prayer for the people of God. But then it's also a prayer for the world in general. You see, the promise to Israel when they were in Babylon, this promise was that one day God would heal the world and make it right and whole and new again. Israel was supposed to be this this little glimpse of that new world. But here they are back in the land and the people look around. Well, everything's still broken. The country, the world, they're all still a big fat mess. And this is a prayer for God to, to finish what he started. Make the world whole again, Jesus. Make the world new and right again. Well, that's our prayer, isn't it? Jesus promised to finish the work that he begun. Jesus promised to return and rule the world and to heal it and make it whole and right and new again. This is a prayer, God, finish your work. Restore the captives. Heal the world. It's a prayer for the world. And then, of course, It's a prayer for us as individuals in our hurting places. A personal prayer for the dry places, for the hard places. Restore, Lord Jesus. Heal, Lord Jesus. Help, Lord Jesus. Whatever dry place you're in, whatever hard place you're in, God sustains us through prayer. You see, prayer, it's one of the ways that God works. Uh, Of course, he answers prayer. Praise the Lord, he answers prayer. But even more than that, prayer is one of the means that he gives to us to strengthen us, to to give us mercy and, and grace to help in our time of need, to shape us, to shape our hearts toward him and toward his promises and toward his purposes. And so, friend, whatever... Whatever dry place you're in this morning, whatever hard place, cry out to the Lord in prayer. Pray for the people of God, for salvation, for the wandering. Pray for the world, for Jesus to come, for King Jesus to make this world new and whole and right again, to right the wrongs. And pray for yourself, for whatever grace and mercy and help you need to make it when the honeymoon's over and the hard part begins. This is a psalm for the dry places, for the hard places, for when the honeymoon's over. And the song teaches us how to make it, how to, how to keep going. The first thing is to thank God. The second is to pray. And the third, then, is to persevere. Persevere. The last two verses, verses 5 and 6 of our text, Psalm 126 the image here, it's, it's an image of, uh, of farming and planting, right? You go out to the field and, and you plant seed. But planting, friends, planting is an act of faith. Planting, so, sowing seed, especially in the ancient world, planting is an act of faith. It, it requires belief that the rain's going to come. 
It requires belief that, that the seed itself will grow. It requires belief that the plant will, will eventually bear fruit and, and bring a harvest. Every act of seed planting, especially in the ancient world, it was an act of faith. No, friends, that's our life. Jesus came into the world. He lived, he, he suffered, he died on the cross, he rose again from the dead. He put his spirit in us, he gave us life. He began his work in us. He began his work through us. And Jesus promised to one day come back to heal the world and make it right again and whole again and new again, to gather his people together for that new world. And every single day that we get up and go into the world, it's an act of faith. Every act of obedience, every, every act of love, every moment of faithfulness, it's an act of faith. It's, it's living out this belief that Jesus really will return one day and heal the world. And that's what perseverance is. Perseverance is believing in the future and having the courage to keep going even though it's hard, even though it hurts. That's perseverance. It's when we keep going even though we don't think we can. It's when we keep trying even though it feels like one failure after another. It's the everyday act of obedience, believing that God will one day bring the rain and the harvest. Perseverance, it's when your husband never says, I love you too, but you keep saying it anyway. That's an act of faith. It's when she, she never seems to appreciate what you do. She never says, thank you, but you keep doing it anyway. It's an act of faith. The kids don't thank you. Your teen won't talk to you. Your adult kids don't want to have anything to do with you. Your aging parents, they don't even seem to remember you. But you keep getting up, and you keep trying, and you keep loving and you keep obeying, it's an act of faith. It's an act of faith, believing one day God's gonna make all this better. One day he's gonna bring the rain and the harvest. That's perseverance. And it's how we make it through the dry places, through the hard times. When the honeymoon is over, every day is an act of faith. Every act of obedience, it's perseverance. There are, these, there are these places in the desert. You, you can find them through the Middle East and in places in Africa. And Actually, when you watch a, a nature show and, and you see the transformation, it's really incredible. But these places in the desert, this is a reference to Psalm 4. The singer says, Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. The Negev is one of these places. Most of the year, it's, it's dry, it's, it's bare, and it's, it's lifeless. It's, it's brown and it's dead. But then a couple times a year, the rain comes. And the rain comes suddenly. The rain falls fast and it's full and the rivers swell and the grasses spring up and everything turns green and life returns and it's amazing. And that's the promise. When Jesus comes, all the desert places, all the dry places, all the hard places, they will fill with life. And that's the promise that keeps us going. When life feels dry, when life feels hard, when the honeymoon is over and the hard part begins, Psalm 126 teaches us how to make it. Thank, pray, persevere. Thank, pray, persevere. Thank, pray, persevere. Restore our fortunes, O oh Lord, like streams in the Negev, like, like overflowing rivers in the desert. Thank, pray, persevere. Will you pray with me? Father, we all come to you in, in various hard places, various degrees of dryness and fruitfulness. And some here have been in the desert for a really, really long time. Some just now entering it and some are experiencing a, a time of abundance wherever we are, Father. Would you teach us to sing this psalm? That in your times of abundance and in the dry places our hearts would still sing 
we give thanks to you that in the dry places, in the hard places, we would cry out to you, Lord, help, have mercy, bring home the captives, heal the world, and help us in our deserts. And would you give us strength to persevere? Acts of obedience every day. Faithful, believing that one day you're going to come and make everything right. Would you give us such perseverance as we turn now to your table? Spirit, come feed us and sustain us. For we come believing in you, desperate for you, and asking in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord's past goodness gives us courage and strength to face today and whatever comes tomorrow. And here at the table, we we remember the Lord's past goodness. We remember his promised help to come. At this table, our Lord Jesus gives us grace. He gives grace to his people. What that does mean is if you're not one of his people, if you're not a follower of Jesus, We ask that you would let the plates pass you by and instead, in whatever hard thing you're going through, cry out to Jesus, ask him to give you faith, ask him to bring rivers in your desert. But for the rest of us, for those who have faith in Jesus, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Have your faith nourished and strengthened. But before we come, before we partake together, Let's confess our faith together. This is just another reminder of the goodness of God as we confess together what we believe. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed this morning. Christian, what is it that you believe? Let's say together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Spirit now to feed our faith through this table. Indeed, Holy Spirit, though we just have common bread and juice in front of us, we ask that you would come and use them for your noble purposes. Would you come, Holy Spirit, and feed and strengthen us like like streams in the Negev, Would you restore to us? Would you heal us? Would you nourish us that we might persevere until you return? Come, Holy Spirit, feed our faith, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Invite the men to come. Who am I that the highest thing would welcome? Lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, his free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Ransom me, oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, all is free indeed. I'm a child.
reminder, with the individual communion cups, there's a small film on the top that you can remove to uh, expose the bread. On the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, that night he gathered his disciples together for supper, and he took the bread, he gave thanks to the Lord for it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. People of Jesus, the body of Jesus, let's take and eat together. Later that night after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks for that, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you, the blood of Jesus. Let's drink together. Will you join me in prayer? Father, we give thanks to you for the love you've lavished on us in Jesus. Jesus, for we give thanks to you for your life, death, and resurrection, for your intercession, your prayers for us. And Holy Spirit, we give thanks to you that you have met with us here, that you have fed us through your word and through the table and through prayer. We ask that you would indeed strengthen our faith. For we ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. People of God, let's give thanks to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's end our service by singing the doxology together. Would you please stand and let's sing together. Receive from the Lord as he blesses and sends you out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in his grace, mercy, and peace.